caught my fiancé in bed with another guy, so I dumped her and slept with her best friend a month later. Now she's depressed and I'm happy. My fiancé cheated on me seven months ago. We started dating when I was 23, and she was 22. She was my first love, and I thought she would be my only. We had been living together for three years and engaged for one, although we hadn't really planned the wedding yet. We were going to, but we were in a bit of a rough patch in our relationship. Still, I thought every relationship goes through tough times, and I loved her with all my heart. Looking back, there were signs she was having an affair, but I couldn't fathom that she would ever do something like that. One day, I got home early from work around lunchtime, which never usually happened. I knew she had the day off, so I didn't tell her I was coming home hoping to surprise her. Maybe we could grab lunch together or something. When I got home, I saw clothes lying around and heard noises coming from the bedroom. My heart was in my throat and my legs started shaking as I walked up the stairs. The bedroom door was slightly open and there she was on all fours with her sass in the air getting plowed by another guy. They didn't notice me. I stood there in shock for what felt like an hour, but it was probably only 5 to 10 seconds. I didn't confront them. I just walked out of the house, got in my car, and drove to a parking lot. I couldn't believe it. I sat in the car and cried my heart out for hours until I felt completely numb. When I got home that evening, my girlfriend acted like nothing had happened. As coldly as I could, I told her I wanted to break up. She started crying and asking for an explanation, but I didn't give her one. I told her I wanted her out of the house in a week and that until then, I'd sleep somewhere else. The house was in my name, so that helped. I walked away and blocked her on everything. I also told my closest friends and family what had happened, but asked them to keep it to themselves and not contact her. I stayed at a friend's place for the first week. When I got home, she had left, thankfully. The first month after the breakup was the hardest of my life. I was absolutely heartbroken. Friends and family of my ex tried to contact me for an explanation, and I got some pretty hateful comments too. There were times when I wanted to tell them to F off and that she had cheated, so she deserved the hate. But I didn't. I just ignored them and blocked them. The hardest part was when her parents reached out to me. Over the years, I had built a strong bond with them. They weren't hateful, they just wanted to talk, but I ignored them too. One of my ex-girlfriend's best friends, let's call her M, and I had gotten quite close over the years. I would even call her a good friend of mine. She wanted to get in touch with me a few times, but I refused. After a month, M contacted me again, saying she just wanted to talk. She also mentioned she had an argument with my ex-girlfriend, but wouldn't tell me why over the phone. I invited her over, and eventually, I told her what happened and why I broke up with my girlfriend. I also told them that I figured she must have known about my ex's affair. I understood she didn't want to betray her friend by telling me, but I didn't really want to be friends with her either. Hem then started crying, saying she had wanted to tell me but felt conflicted. That was also the reason M and my ex had argued. M had told my ex she didn't know why I broke up with her, but that she deserved it. We talked for a while longer and ended up sleeping together. Eventually, I told my ex, and now they're not really friends anymore. In fact, it broke up their entire friend group. I wrote a letter to my ex's parents, explaining everything, telling them I was heartbroken by the situation, that I had always loved them, and that I wished things had been different. I got a letter back saying they understood and always thought I was the perfect son-in-law. They expressed disappointment in their daughter and wished me the best. That was seven months ago. Last week, I heard my ex had become really depressed and is now in therapy. The best part is that I don't really think about her anymore. I don't feel hate, resentment, or sadness, just indifference. When I heard about her depression, I didn't care. Maybe I felt some pity, but not much. Six months later, I dodged a bullet, and I'm happy while she's depressed, having lost a loving partner, friends, and disappointing her parents. Story 2 A few years ago my husband and I purchased a house with a pool. Now we are acquainted with most of our neighbors but definitely not close friends with any of them. They all seem nice but well just don't have much in common other where we live. Next door to the right is a family of six, twin daughters attending the local university. High school age son and a young elementary school age daughter maybe first or second grade and the parents. Now normally we open the pool in early May and leave it keep it open until the end of October. But this year our weather was off and we had a very cool and very wet month of May and then June went straight to 100 plus temperatures. I am currently on a medication that makes it difficult for me to tolerate being in the sun and heat for an extended time. Plus we have been helping two extended family members who are having health issues. So because of this we haven't had our pool open yet this year. 
Normally we go to the family lake house for a week during each of the three major holidays, but we didn't go for Memorial Day because there was flooding around the lake this year, and because a family member was just discharged from the hospital yesterday, and July 4th being a Thursday this year we decided to stay home this week and be available to help this family member. Now several times in June the little girl next door has seen either my husband or myself outside and she has asked when we are opening the pool. We first told her maybe later, but the last time, yesterday she asked and I said we are probably just not going to open it this year, and she started crying. Now we have never had any of the neighbors over to use our pool so I didn't understand why she was crying over us not opening our pool. Well I spoke with the neighbor on the left later and apparently our neighbors on the right have been having a small family party at our pool every 4th of July when we are gone. They have always cleaned up really well afterwards and because we have scheduled pool maintenance and weekly yard service occasionally things are moved around in our yard and we never thought much about it. The neighbor on the left thought we had given the other neighbors permission to use our pool. We did give them permission to retrieve any balls or toys that ended up in our yard, but never permission to use our pool especially when we are not at home. We have a special latch on the gate and my husband did show the neighbor how to open the gate to retrieve his kids' toys. So now my husband, who loves gadgets, is going to have several more cameras installed around the exterior of our house, covering the gate and pool area, and have the gate latch made where we can grant remote access for the pool service and yardmen. Luckily we have a friend who does cameras and home automation systems. I'm annoyed our neighbors have been using our pool without permission but my husband is happy I am letting him get more gadgets around the house. Now do we confront the neighbors and let them know we know they have been using our pool, or just wait and see if they say anything about our new security cameras. Some relevant comments. I would also suggest you place no trespassing signage on your gate and around the fence. Then watch your cameras. This way you can call authorities when you see them enter your property on camera. Maybe even a smile you are on camera. And if the neighbor asks if they can come on your property to use your pool because their daughter really looks forward to it, you can hit them back with oh no we do not want to be liable for any injuries that may occur. Tell them they can certainly get their own pool if it is that important for their family. I used to have a pool and the upkeep and chemicals are not cheap. The entitlement of some people. Wow, it has come to our attention that your family and guests you have invited have been trespassing on our property and using our pool facilities without either our permission or knowledge. This is completely unacceptable and we are shocked that you would have done this as a regular thing over a number of years without seeking permission, which due to both insurance liabilities and our own preference would have been refused. Consider this formal notification that you are not to enter our property for any reason. We will consider this trespass and will seek immediate police and legal intervention. You should also be aware that we are currently seeking legal advice regarding the trespasses and, frankly, audaciously entitled behavior that you have displayed. This is not subject to negotiation. What a bunch of twunts. Update. I don't know how to link the original post or if it is even possible. I didn't expect this to blow up like it has, certainly didn't expect over a thousand comments. I have tried to read them all, and some were very creative and amusing to read. First of all, we don't want to hurt anyone or alienate our neighbors. We just don't want people using our pool without permission and we don't want the liability associated with this activity. A few things I feel I need to clarify. Yes, our backyard is fully fenced in with two gates. One in back is double locked from the inside. The side gate on the side of garage nearest the neighbors in question has a double latch that you have to reach over the top and find not one but two releases to open the gate. There is also an auto close that automatically closes the gate and latches it. I personally can't open the gate from the outside of the fence because I can't reach over that far to reach the two latches. The previous owner put this in and it has worked well for our yard crew and the pool maintenance people. We do have some cameras, a doorbell camera and a camera over our garage area. The garage camera picks up if someone goes towards the gate from the front. But we didn't want to invade our neighbor's privacy by recording their side garage door and gate to their backyard. We even shared the camera angle with them because we didn't want them to be concerned about us recording their children or their coming and going. I guess we were more concerned about their privacy than they were about ours. Anyway the update, Thursday. July 4th morning, I was loading a few things in my vehicle to take to my cousin who just got out of the hospital. Neighbor, husband, who has been gone a lot for work recently, saw me and came over and asked if I was getting a late start going to the lake. I let him know that we were staying home because we are helping my cousin who just got out of the hospital. He asked if we were going to be home all weekend. I said yes one or both of us be around all weekend. He quickly wished me a happy 4th and went home. 
I went back in to grab my purse and tell my husband about the conversation with the neighbor before I left. When I got home our friend, Mike was there. Mike does security cameras and home automation systems, gadgets and my husband loves gadgets. Mike and my husband have a plan for multiple cameras and several gadgets, some of which involve us going ahead and having the pool opened. I agreed to all but one of the new cameras and almost all of the gadgets. I think husband put some in the plan knowing he would have to give up a few of them. Mike also suggested talking to our homeowner's insurance agent because we might be able to get some discounts with the security upgrades. So on Friday the 5th, Tom, our insurance guy comes over and Mike is back and he has a drone to help him find the best camera positions. Really I think he just wanted to show off his gadget. So husband, Mike and Tom are outside and all around the house and occasionally inside. I look outside every so often and at different times other neighbors have come outside and down to our end of the street. So neighbors want to know what is going on. So husband tells them we are concerned that someone or several people may have used our pool without our permission while we were not home. It turns out that two different neighbors had witnessed some friends of the neighbor children come over last year and they and the neighbor twins had gone into our backyard. One neighbor even asked the girls and they claimed that we let them come over all the time and use our pool. So at this point husband and Tom discuss this and Tom says we should send a registered letter to the neighbors rescinding our permission from entering our fenced in backyard. So before Mike and Tom left, the neighbors on the right, pool party neighbors come home. Both husband and wife. My husband asks to talk to them. And with Mike and Tom as witnesses he tells them that for insurance reasons we are rescinding our permission for them or any member of their family or guests to enter our fenced in backyard and we will be sending a registered letter stating this as requested by our insurance. Husband never accused them or their children of using our pool, but said we had reason to believe that in the past our pool had been used without our permission. He did say that we had reason to believe that their older children might be friends with someone who has been in our pool. Husband also told them that we are changing the gate to have an automated lock and cameras will be installed around the pool area. He also assured them that we avoid the cameras pointed at their windows or backyard. Husband indicated that we were taking these measures to hopefully lower our homeowner's insurance rates. Husband said that they exchanged a few looks between them but they said they understood and appreciated the heads up. So hopefully this saga is over, but if there are any other updates I will try and post them. Story 3. People stealing plane seats and getting told off for it are some of my favorite stories on Reddit. With the increase of plane seat bandits, most likely due to do airlines almost making it a requirement to pay for seats if you want to sit next to your plane partner. I have been half expecting to run into one since me and my husband travel a lot for work. Well, it finally happened and it was fun. Me and my husband always buy plane seats towards the back of the plane. As we stroll down we see a lady with a young son maybe 11 or 12 sitting in our seats. They were both deep in their phones when I told her she was in our seats. We had to wake up at 3 to drive to the airport, and we didn't really sleep so I was not in the mood for nonsense. She smiles and tells us that they weren't seated together so the stewardess told her they could sit here. She most definitely didn't. I smile back and say we paid for these seats so we would like to sit there. She keeps smiling her stiff smile and points to other empty seats behind us and asks if we wouldn't mind sitting in one of them since they are already settled and comfortable. Would it even matter? Well, I said, yes since the plane is still boarding so these might all be reserved and it really messes with the system if people sit in random seats. She is starting to lose her smile and says if there aren't seats available after the plane is finished boarding they would move then. I am not confrontational and am usually a people pleaser so I'm struggling to stand up for myself but I'm so proud for doing it anyways. Meanwhile my husband is struggling between boarding passengers to get the fight attendant. I sigh and with a half smile say I'm sorry but I just want to sit down and not stand in the hallway blocking people to see if maybe there are empty seats when I paid for our seats. And besides, I would like the police to be able to identify our bodies by seat number in case the plane crashes and our families want to bury our remains. The kid's face, which has been glued to his phone this entire time, shoots up in shock and he looks between me and his mom. It was delicious. She has a bewildered look on her face. There is silence for five seconds before she packs up her stuff and pokes her son to move. I keep smiling sweetly and thank her and plomp myself down as my husband returns with a flight attendant. I tell her everything is fine and tell my husband what happened. We laughed and I'm pretty sure the mom heard, or I hope so. I didn't look back but I think I'm not mistaken of feeling laser stare in the back of my head. Luckily the flight was only 3 hours so I didn't need to walk past for the loo. Relevant comments. My husband is very tall. If he doesn't have extra legroom, like exit row, he doesn't fit in the seat. He boarded the plane and found a couple in the two exit row seats, his was the aisle. 
They refused to move. My very big and tall husband now blocking the aisle got the attention of a flight attendant on the other side. She crossed the middle row, luckily still empty. They had purchased one exit row seat, one in the row behind and then one whatever was cheapest at the very back. They offered him his wife's seat that person was the wife's sister and she declined to move. The wife's seat was the one at the back. Then they tired to argue that he was by himself and it wasn't a big deal and they were already seated and look how my husband was the one holding up the plane. The flight attendant did ask my husband if you wouldn't mind swapping. He asked her if she actually thought he would fit, she said no. After a several minute standoff, the sister kept her seat, the husband kept his and the wife was exiled to the back of the plane. Many snide comments from the sister that she couldn't believe that the husband wouldn't let the wife sit there so they could talk during the flight. A half dozen visits from the wife until she was told to go back to her seat and stay there. The husband did his best to be a jerk the entire flight, but my husband just put his headphones on, enjoyed his aisle seat with legroom and ignored. I truly don't get why people think this behavior is okay. I have usually been willing to trade seats to let families stay together. One time, maybe 10 or so years ago, a man wanted to trade with me, but I would have had to sit in a bulkhead seat, and I sadly had to decline and explained why. This man went and got the flight attendant to come ask me to switch after I had said no. Laughing my sass off, I said to her sure, but since I can't have my medical emergency bag in the seat pocket in front of me, that means the airline accepts responsibility if I have an asthma attack and die, right? And she was like why didn't you just tell him that? And I was like sis of course I told him. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.